Hi, everybody. It's good to see you all. Yes, it is. Um, uh, this is Mark, my partner. I can I'm, see you all. I think we can see you. And I'm Sorrel. And today we have got the final losing strategy, which is the fifth one, which is the fifth, sorry, which is withdrawal. <laughs> you see, he hates it when I speak. Withdrawal. So, yeah, so we're going to talk about withdrawal and we're going to talk about what you can do instead of withdrawal because actually the alternative to withdrawal is really, well, I won't say it's easy, but it's got a nice structure to it, hasn't it? But we will come back to that <coughs> after we've talked about all the kinds of withdrawal that people can indulge themselves in when they're cross with their partner. Or feeling under fire, like, you know, when their partner's very cross with them. So, and we both are going to admit up front that we have both engaged in withdrawal. Withdra it was running. <laughs> running away. I, I just ran you away. Did. You got in a car and drove away. And I got in the car and I drove away because when the, when, when the conversation is getting all hot and mm -hmm. gas mark four. That's not that hot, is it, gas mark four? I think you mean gas mark seven. I don't know why we're talking gas marks. You said you do everything centigrade. Sorry, I'm trying to be better than you aren't, and I well, that won't do. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, so you you withdrew when things got too hot, mm. and, and you yeah. I withdraw when I don't want to have that conversation, and if somebody's forcing me to have a conversation, I'm even more likely to withdraw. Yeah, and I'm and, if, and in fact, and if they're just shouting and glaring and giving me all that tone and eye contact in the first place, mm -hmm. it's time to withdraw. It is. And, and my, my ex used to say, I have a bone to put with you. Um, that was a good reason to leave the country. That's what you did. You just time to leave the country until, you, until they calmed down. When did you leave the country? Don't get tangent time for this. <laughs> Stay on point here. You, stay, you left the country, but you came back. So there's no, I didn't. I fucked off forever. Oh, sorry. That was a different meaning of the country then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. Withdrawal, we withdraw because there's no point standing in front of a pursuant, angry, violent party. Well, it's not, it's, it's not pleasant. No, it's not. No. So when we relate this to, what was that? What? The other losing strategy, which is just emptying your mind at someone. Oh, that's unbridled self-expression. Yes, unsolicited unbridled self-expression. Yes. I definitely try and withdraw from that sort of thing. And we, I think we would say we both had that same experience of withdrawing from unbridled right. self -expression. Now, what we should have done is we should have stayed there and nailed them to the wall with their inconsequences. You are horrible. But we didn't. We were graceful and we retired the field so oh, that there was less blood. I think I tried a bit of psychological nailing before I gave up and withdrew. So I'm not as guilt-free as you are. That's because I just don't have overblown ideas about my skill sets. Like me, <laughs> she's ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what what we wanted to say though was that mm. withdrawal can take many forms, yes. and it can start with something as as simple as going into another room with a novel and putting your nose in it, or turning on the television for that matter. Mm. And so you're you're kind of making yourself unavailable for yes. the conversation. Or oh, it doesn't always work because sometimes people will say, "Could you put that book down now and listen to well, me?" Well, sometimes you are pursued. Sometimes you are pursued. So the withdrawal normally walks along with pursuance it does this fact, is the two almost, almost always yeah it's you it's pursuit and withdrawal and then it's just a question of what That's kind right. of pursuit and withdrawal can be quite soft and tender it can be like quietly passive aggressive oh i forgot or, oh, oh that, yes yeah, sorry. Yeah, it can be all sorts i forgot we should be out tonight i'm sorry i'm not here because i've got another point. Kind of so it's just basically this is how not to withdraw, which is our tanty, a stamp, a prearranged, not prearranged thing. Yeah. As a, as, a, as a weaponly thing to do. And then, of course, there's the other thing, which is the care package, which is I'm going to withdraw for about oh, 20 minutes. Yes. Okay, carry on. Okay. Yeah, go on. Because it was a bit more about withdrawal. Go on, speak. So, so women tend to withdraw. Well, how do women withdraw? What would I have done? I'd have, <sighs> I'd have gone and washed up. I remember this thing about um, being on the receiving end of some rather angry words and starting to wash up and then being told I wasn't paying attention 
yeah, that was the whole idea was to not be paying full attention because if I did, it wasn't very pleasant. Um, men, and my dad used to withdraw to the garage to work on what, either the car or some project he had going. And I can entirely understand why my dad was withdrawing because my mother was a very angry pursuer. Um, did she object to his withdrawal? She, she didn't like it if he spent the entire day in there. She didn't like it if there were things that, like jobs she wanted him to do in the house. And she didn't like it if he didn't come in on time for supper or something. So, so let me ask you this. Yeah. So there's an angry pursuer yeah. being as horrible as possible yeah. and then upset that people don't turn up and have a cup of tea and turn up to supper on time and help yeah, them out with those stuff. sorts of things. I think in the end they, they, they managed to get to a point where they could balance these things and by that time she'd probably run out of energy for being an angry pursuer. Well, just too it, ill, but, um, I find that fascinating because what, what, is, what, is, what are the um, unwilling celibates? Remember them? Yeah, the other Who just won't make an effort to be attractive or easy to get yeah, on with. Yeah, yeah. Was your mother a bit like that with regards to him? Why Why did he run in that way? Because she was angry. That's she right. shouted a lot. And she kept kept doing this. And Lots. so he just hid in the shed, right? Yeah, effectively, except mm. it was a garage. But right. yeah, I, and I think it's a very, very common pattern. I don't think... And we find men doing it to women, women do it. It's just not a sex thing. It's a... It's a relationship it's thing. It's a relationship thing. It's Absolutely. one of them's angry. The yeah. other one's trying to get and away it, from the anger. It's a classic case of the more, the more, because the more she pursued and the more angry she was, the more he would withdraw. Well, absolutely. And I have seen that play out in so many couples. How so, can how can she miss that? What does she think she's doing by continuing to pursue she, in this way? Well, I don't know, but my guess is it's that jam jar thing again, that they're inside a relationship jam jar this time and they just don't see what they're doing. They don't see that what they're doing is perpetuating a pattern which cycles around and around and around. Which is why we have relationship coaches, great. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Because we're outside of that couple's jam jar, aren't we? We're looking, saying, oh, do you realise what you're doing? And then you want to make sure that, that they understand what they're doing. You see, this is lovely. You as a relationship coach see this and want to heal these people. I as a filmmaker want to make comedy. <sighs> and there is some. There is definitely some. There I mean, is some. I mean, it's not very funny for the couple. At all. It's hysterical. Yeah, but you know what the funny thing is that later on, when you've mm. either removed yourself from that that relationship or you've healed it to the point that you're getting on okay, you mm. can laugh about it. Yes. But you can't laugh about, it, laugh about it when you're in it. You just cannot see the funny side. Well, that's because the relationship is hell. Well, it is, yeah. It's absolutely. an absolute it's a disgusting display of incompetence. On I mean, both parties. I have to say, I do remember laughing with my lovely friend Les about how awful things were. Did you? Yes. That's actually <laughs> quite funny. We were quite intrigued by the fact that we were laughing, laughing, I was laughing about the whole situation. Well, one should, because I've never seen a relationship, I've yet to see a relationship that doesn't have all these nuances in it. Y yes. Which therefore makes anyone's ambition to have a relationship utterly ridiculous, considering what you're up against. You do say some so you have just you know. got to have your sense of humour with you. Yeah, you and you have got to have. A, I think it's the humility to realise that you are part of the problem. Now, yeah. I'm not going to say that if you're in a very abusive relationship where I don't know your 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 physical safety is at risk, mm -hmm. that you should consider yourself to be such an important part of the problem. It's it's not. I'm not saying that at all. And in that situation, you might wish to re re remove yourself anyway. However, we tend to get, end up in relationships where we play out what happened in our family of origin. So, oh, I don't want to go too far down this line because we're going to get distracted. But withdrawal, it, it's an entirely understandable strategy, but it doesn't work. I think that's because it's a losing strategy. Well... Yes, and that's because the kind of withdrawal we're talking about now is the kind of withdrawal des designed to really upset you, as opposed to the kind of withdrawal some, that I'm going to use as an investment in our sometimes peace. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it is just literally removing yourself from the situation temporarily, but it still isn't a solution. It's a temporary. It's like putting a plaster, isn't it, on a, a wound? The plaster doesn't heal the wound; it just protects it from dirt. So. It's a similar kind of thing. It's a temporary fix, but it doesn't really address the long-term problem. We said that three times, so let's go. 
So what does? So the thing that works is time out. Yeah. So time out is <laughs> you haven't agreed it yet. Come back so we can agree it. Mark. So okay, we're gonna do time out, okay? So we're gonna do it on the basis of that when you're fed up with me, you're gonna tell me you're mm. going out for 20 minutes and you will check back in at the end of 20 minutes to let me know how you're doing. And then you can either say, I'm coming back now, I think I'm okay. Or you can say, I, I, I need another couple of hours. I'm still absolutely hopping mad. Or I'm still feeling really threatened or whatever it might be. And you keep checking back. So in. as I withdraw from you, you angry pursuer, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is extend a certain care because I don't want you to be even angrier or even more pursuing. It's, uh, it's so I'm going to easier. tell you when I'm coming back so that you have one thing less to be bloody angry about. Or pursue me over. Though, but also it's that's very green. sensible. It is sensible. I like there's a very, there's a lovely grace there. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it, it's just like, you know, don't be don't add more malice to the problem, isn't it? So I've yeah. given up on my spite and my payback with you, angry pursuer, who insists upon being right, you see? I've, <laughs> I've given up on all that because that's probably a childhood thing, right? Probably needs a cuddle. Yeah. And I'm just going out for 20 minutes to find my peace of mind before I come back in here to help us yeah. get forward in this relationship. And, you know, if things are really, really bad, you might say, I'm going to my mum's, I'm going to stay overnight and I'll come okay. back tomorrow. But you keep checking back in. So these, this is a good withdrawal as opposed mm. to a weaponized it hurt is. withdrawal. This Absolutely. is a keep the peace withdrawal. It's a keep the peace withdrawal. That's nice. Yeah. That is nice. And the really key thing is it's something you've agreed to already because you see, I never did with that. your relationship I, just, coach. I never did that I always ran for the hills because we weren't talking by that point and there was no point in talking because all there was was shouting volumes and so yeah. that is how yeah, well, one ended up withdrawing neither of us quickly, did that time out in those days quickly with a grab bag you know <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm just gonna get boom when they've gone to the loo or something oh you need to withdraw when they didn't even know you were withdrawing Front. It, yes. So, all they, the only reason they knew was because they heard the door slam. They didn't even know that. The door went quietly. I'm oh, not a slammer. Oh, right. I'm just a vanisher. Okay. Because, you know, this is not safe to speak you know, to you. Slamming doors is not clever because sometimes people think it's clever to me. It happened to me once. It was so painful. Did you slam the door? I slammed it. It was the door between the dining room and the living room. And you were having a tanty? We're having a tanty in the dining room. Okay. And I don't know what I was so cross about. And I slammed out and I caught my finger. It's double doors. Caught my finger between the two doors. <laughs> I think I got laughed at. Well, you were the, you were the, you were trying to get away. You were being pursued. Yeah, we were a, an and so this was clumsiness in, in, yeah. in escape. Yeah, so you should really be careful. And he laughed at you. I don't know if he laughed. I can't remember. Did you cut his willy off later? I, no, I did not. I'm not, I'm not that vindictive. Well, Bobbit, remember Bobbit. It. Yes, he was a chap who got his willy cut off by his missus, and then he sat it sewed back on and became a porn star. Why are we talking about Bobby? Because this is the whole thing. If you're going to go to sleep beside someone, and you're busy withdrawing and angry pursuing and retaliating and all the other stuff that yeah. we've talked about here, yeah. we are nuts, right? You're going to go to sleep behind this person that you've utterly oh, alienated. I know. It is interesting. And they're in absolute rage. And you think you're going to go to sleep safely behind, beside this? Well, isn't it interesting how you you come to a, what would it be, an understanding in yourself that this person's never going to actually lay their hands on me? If you knew that. The funny thing is, is I've worked in casualty. And I've had <laughs> loads of patients turn up from that naive position. Oh, I expect you have. Huh? Saucepan injuries and whatnot. I am well. Let's not get on the subject of kitchen utensils. Okay. I was going to say to anyone actually watching us, if you're there now at 14 minutes past two, 14, 14, please say hello in the comments so we know you're there. I think everyone's far too busy at two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. I think it's a very poor time to be doing this. I stuff. think this is why you've chosen it, so that we can actually develop <laughs> ourselves without having to be embarrassed by people listening. Well, perhaps it is. Perhaps by the time it Unless it's our special, special fan club. And there's only about a million of you. So you know oh, you and actually, what we should say is next weekend we're going to do something about winning strategies, aren't we? Yes. Which includes timeout. Yeah. But it's not the only thing. And then we're going to have at least two weeks' holiday. 
So we're going to be off the air for two weeks. And then we're going to review whether we're going to come back in December again. So if you want to be here live, next week could be your last chance. I mean, this has been a bit of a commitment, hasn't it? Being in front of this laptop every Saturday at two o'clock. I'm ashamed as the exhibitionist who has no worries about my content whatsoever. You, however, are the totally tooled up, paid for professional who has to do all the work and is concerned. And I have to make you read the book as well. She has to make you read oh, the book. Oh, yeah, the book. So mm -hmm. just, just to give Terry Real. Terry Real, yeah. Give, give him his due, because yeah. he's the author of The Five Losing Packages. Yes, um, and, and, yeah. and it's good stuff. It's good stuff. But the other thing I want to say about the withdrawal thing, to come back to the bad withdrawals versus the good withdrawal, is, is that well, he, uh, Terry talks about five areas of intimacy, and I quite like this, this notion. He talks about, so if I can remember, physical, sexual, emotional, spiritual, and intellectual, I believe. And so what he's saying is you can withdraw on one or two of those fronts, but not all of them. Yes. So, I mean, we all know about the withdrawal of sexual services. That's a classic one, really. Yeah. Um, but then there's things like intellectual withdrawal, where you refuse to have a discuss intellectual discussion with your partner because you think, it's just stupid anyway. Well, there's just no point, especially if they diss everything that you say to them. Well, that's part of their withdrawal in a way, isn't it? No, it's not going really to be part of that withdrawal. But the thing is that you can actually get to a point where somebody with whom you could have had a, a really engaging conversation has decided, for whatever reason, that you're not worth talking to and has therefore withdrawn from the field, or they might just keep putting you down and telling you you're stupid and then you withdraw from the field. So that's, that's one thing. Well, the reason people don't talk to one another is because they find it un unfulfilling. That's about it. Gosh, you do make some very sweeping statements. Well, it's just basic, isn't it? Most of it. Well, it's unfulfilling because, it, yeah, it's because, a question of why because, it's Well, exactly. Because one of the parties or both parties hasn't got an open enough heart and an open enough mind to try and make it successful. And that's why they're fighting. You know, fighting is a reflex, actually. It's, rarely is it a choice. I find it's a reflex. Oh, it's definitely a reflex. I yeah. entirely agree with that. Yes. I think if it's a choice, this then is why you're, this is you're, not... you're in the sort of gaslight, not you. Anyone who makes it as a choice, makes it makes the choice to fight, is more in the gaslighting, you know, deliberately undermining. Well, we're, we're professional soldiers now, we know what we're doing, that sort of thing. Yeah. You want to hurt them. That's the difference. Yeah. You actually want to hurt it's someone. It's like when someone actually said, take away everything you ever had. You want to take control. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so we were talking, yeah, so those five, so you can actually still have a, because, you know, we, we cook together and we looked after the kids together and went on. So you can have a half assed relationship. Yeah. It's just, it's just not entirely complete. But if you start to notice uh, that you're withdrawing. Is, and there's dead areas. So, yeah, and the, what I'm going to so, say is, yeah. is that, so if you've noticed you're withdrawing in one or two of those areas, mm. the chances are in the end, the entire lot will collapse underneath you. That has been my experience. Generally speaking, I gradually withdraw on the areas yeah. that are not fulfilling. And before long, you find there's nothing there's left. Nothing left, absolutely. absolutely. I think so I can't talk to you. Uh, sex is a bit of a problem because it's so emotionally loaded. What else? Let's not talk about money, for goodness sake. Let's not talk about the kids, for goodness sake. Please don't talk about your mum. <laughs> don't expect any emotional support from me. Yes. And really, I'm just so fed up um, with all of your political positions. I'm just not going to get upset anymore. And then suddenly, this, and even the spiritual dimensions, like, Suddenly, the fact that you, you know that I don't know. Can one you, of you is a Christian, the other one's a Muslim. Can you be wildly at war and have a spiritual dimension? Well, you're clearly having some spiritual problems if you're at war, at, uh, at war aren't you? Mm -hmm. um, and I've come across couples where they have two different um, religions, mm -hmm. and it isn't a problem because they both respect each other's faith and they don't think, oh, but you're wrong because you're a Christian or you're wrong because you're a Hindu, whatever it might be. Mm. Um, but when they, if that couple were to get to a point where they were at war all the time, my suspicion is that the, they would then start to lose that sympathy in the well, spiritual zone. Well, then they would then cleave back to their religious basis, wouldn't they? What, and I think they'd probably start to lose sight of any commonalities. Well, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, if you're going to be a mixed religion relationship, you, you might be the finest of us to be able to do that. Well, it, and if it goes wrong, it will go wrong. You know? Yeah, you know? absolutely. Because, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's not exactly one that you're going to make bets on, is it? 
yeah, you'll be successful. You both come from different churches, so you can't talk about the religion thing. That'll help. Now, if only you became from different political parties and you could talk about that too, that would also help. I just find, yeah, I find, I find the, let's not go down the different political parties thing because that one I find, I find that actually harder to understand than different religions. You can't believe that somebody would have a different, different political opinion to you. No, I just find it, I can't imagine ever being involved with somebody who's in the right wing. Like me and my, Nigel Farage, no, I don't think so. I might remind you the man is somebody, he's completely unattractive as well. Yeah. You see, you're, you're okay, you're in there, yeah. Nigel Farage. <laughs> Don't look like Nigel Farage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got thrown out cute as well. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, withdrawal. Is there anything else we can say about the, the business of time out? Because I think that's really important. So, the, okay, the key thing is with time out is you have agreed this in, in principle already. You have decided that when things start to get out of hand, one or the other of you is entitled to say, I need some time out. And you do it in a sort of in a generous fashion, like you described. And you stick to the rules. So role play. Okay. You're upset. So am I taking time out? You're taking time out. Right. Well, I'm finding this, this conversation really hard and I'm getting quite emotional. And I think I might say something I later regret. And, and you've abducted my hair. So thank you, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go out, and I will check back in with you in 20, 20 minutes, and just let you know how things are going. And I might come back then if I think I can. I'm not sure I'm going now. I'm going to read this book. <laughs> right. And then, then you do check back in after twenty minutes, and you, and if you don't come back straight away, then you do check in again. And I think it's an hour or two hours, and brush the time frames. Time gaps get longer. Actually, well, doesn't the time out also gives the pursuant, the aggressor, well, it notice does. that it's not going well. It and also gives them time to calm down. So there's an airbag value. To the so whole thing. the interesting thing about time out is that do you remember Callan Hammond? Mm -hmm. Do you remember Callan Hammond? I don't know. Callan Hammond's another relationship coach. Okay. And he he discovered with his wife that she was the one who used to slam out. I don't know if she slammed out, but she used to go out when they were in the middle of an argument and he'd get cross because she, this is without doing time out, this is just what they were doing as part of their fighting stance. And so then he realised that when she came back, like 20 or 30 minutes later, and they were both calmer and therefore they could, they could, they could be, um, have a so calm conversation. However, with time out, you actually do not talk, whatever it is that you were fighting about, before you, you went out, you don't talk about it for 24 hours. Because you're too hot in the head. It's, yeah, you need to let let it all. And, and so I like <coughs> Callum's thing, because Callum's thing is about during the time that they were apart, they let their thinking settle. So you've got to, you know, this is time out is really about putting the relationship first. Yes. Lifting the relationship, yes. protecting yourself from this moment of discussion <laughs> of, of temperament. Yes. And making sure you can come back to it civilly. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's really important what you said about is putting the relationship first. Well, there's no point talking to each other if all you can do is fight and object, right? No, absolutely. That has to, there's no point. And there's no point in talking like that with each other until somebody appears to have won because they won't have won. No. The other never. party will just sort of say, oh, I can't be bothered to talk to you. And, <laughs> and anyway, that, you don't want winners and losers in a relationship, do you? No, you don't. Because, you know, winners come with losers. Well, winners tend to be losers in the end anyway. Because in the end, you lose, you know, if you don't sort the problem out, it ends in divorce and then you lose a whole lot. Mm. So as opposed to making the effort to, if you possibly can, mend a relationship, get it back onto a good footing and then deepening the, the connection, the intimacy. So what we're saying is there's no point advancing in anger, even if you're going to split up. Because that was a very nice point you made there. Whatever a relationship is doing, it might as well be able to communicate clearly, yeah, even maybe. if it, even if it's in separation. I mean, I have seen quite a few people who parted company and divorced on amicable terms and are good friends afterwards. And that, if you've got children, I think that's really important because it means that you know when you go to the wedding, the graduations, and the weddings, and 
listening to if you're doing those sorts of things. You can both go and you can get along rather than sitting there and it's all tense and... Um, oh, it's nonsense. The awkwardness of Absolute that. nonsense, all that. Yeah. Guff. Yeah, quite so. Yeah, but you have to actually part of company on good terms. Yeah. Recognising that you're just going to make it work and that you both deserve some respect, <coughs> hmm. I guess. Okay. And be able to be friends. I've never managed it. Well, I reckon that you've never managed it. No. Well, fine skill, fine skill. I think it's, I, I, I did have a go with one of them, but we'd only been together for a year, so it hardly counts, does it? Well, the problem was being friends with somebody who you thought you loved and then realised that you could probably get along without them. Yeah. You well, know each other quite well by then. And point, but no, yes, except that what? what I'd say is that what you've come to know is the character that person has brought with them, and that isn't who they are. The character is what was formed in childhood, and in that kind of that hot space of where well, all the hurt childhood hurts. Are you being all hippie accepting here? No, I am just saying that there's... <laughs> I'm just recognising... You are that. sometimes, you are so irritating. <laughs> <laughs> um, so your character is formed in childhood and it can change. And actually... Uh, oh, in a, uh, in opposition to the sort of old-fashioned idea that it took years and years and years, you can actually change in a heartbeat once you understand what your character is and it isn't who you actually are. So you get to know the person's character really well in awful detail that you wish you didn't. But if once you realise that that isn't who they truly are and it's just, you know, that whole kind of survival kit thing that people create to look after themselves and their kids, does it work in, in a relationship, does it work in marriage, then... Um, it's like, okay, so how do we change? How do I change my survival kit? And how do you change your survival kit? So it's changing your character. Because I know that the things I did to keep myself safe as a child ain't going to work in this relationship. And it certainly didn't work in my marriage, and nor particularly in the previous ones either. All of the which leads us really neatly yeah. into the five other strategies, which we may or may We're not do to... in the weeks to come. And I'm delighted you got really interesting to the end there because you're all hanging on this cliff edge of ooh, well, there are characters five, changing yeah. in seconds, eh? Mm -hmm. There are five winning strategies. Yeah. None of them have Johnny Depp in them. Oh, no. So I'm not going to tell them. Actually, that's not true. They do. They all have Johnny Depp in them, so that'll be fine. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't see that bit of the book yet. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and the five, actually the five winning strategies are more of a kind of a almost like five stages, I think. Um, they, they're they're exactly, yes, the, the five, lo is that us? Five losing strategies are all about how to lose it. And five yeah. winning strategies are all about how to win it. And if yeah, you're very absolutely. lucky, we'll be talking about that in a couple of weeks time. Well, next week. Oh, someone's on. Look at that. I can't see what it says. Hang on. Oh, can't, I can't see it. Lincoln is on here, but I can't see what his comment. Ooh, um, yeah, so no, we're going to be back next Saturday mm -hmm. for our final session before our holiday. Mm -hmm. And then if we're feeling nice. Oh, look, Lincoln, great double act. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hi, Lincoln, it's great to you. Um, yeah, oh, God, I've lost my thread now. See, I can't multitask task anymore. You're supposed to be able to relate to the audience and stick to the script, Sos. <laughs> Where are you? I had no training Just in this. not a professional. And deal with you at the same time, that's three tasks. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, we're back next week, and then we may or may not come back in October. We don't know. Mm -hmm. So we're not making any promises. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a think about how we spend our Saturdays. Mm -hmm. But we might come back because we love you all. Thank you very, very much for your time yeah. and your attention. All the million of you that are our friends. And there's Harriet. Come and say goodbye. And we wish you very well in all of your relationships, even if they're cross species. <laughs> so that's to say, we love your cats and dogs and your goldfishes. And whatever other creatures you have living in your homes, mm -hmm. but not your pet bugs. So, see you next week. <laughs> I'm going to withdraw. I'm stalking off, mate. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs>